Now, Jason, allegations of mismanagement of funds and abuse of authority have surfaced at a once successful nonprofit organization. A former employee and board of trustee of Able Industries has come forward and believes Guam could lose out in millions in federal money and 200 people could be out of work or have to transition to another nonprofit organization unless someone steps in and investigates. Because the program is in jeopardy and uh, uh, the pro, uh, Able Industries is a niche affiliate and the niche people uh, the, uh, in the U.S. are deeply concerned about what is going on. Yolan Sobredo was hired by Able Industries last year to come in and assist with compliance issues. Able Industries of the Pacific is the island's largest employer of people with disabilities, but Sobredo contends that the nonprofit organization is being run into the ground. Part of that reason is because of the mismanagement, what I believe to be mismanagement of funds. The company's 401k is an example. Sobredo contends Able Industries stopped making payments, but employees are looking to pull their retirement, either because of financial hardships or because they're leaving the company. You cannot hide the fact that you haven't paid 401 for persons with disabilities since January of 2010. Money that belongs to them, it doesn't belong to the, to, to the nonprofit. Sobredo alleges that Able Industries board member Elmore Cotton and President and CEO Joaquin Leon Guerrero took over the company when founder Andrew Porter died back in 2009. Ken Leon Guerrero and Mo Cotton ended up just taking control of the company. He himself uh, created his own salary together with um, the chairman of the board, Mr. Cotton to give him a $96,000 salary, plus let's give, let's give Mr. Leon Guerrero a car, let's give him a cell phone, let's give him a credit card. Sobredo questions how the two were able to take control and further alleges that Cotton and Leon Guerrero have conspired to line their own pocketbooks at the detriment of the 200 plus employees at the company. He explains that a year and a half ago, Able Industries was located on base in what he believes was a rent-free facility. But since Leon Guerrero and Cotton, who is also a principal broker for Century 21, took over, the company moved its offices and is now paying rent to Century 21. And there's a conflict of interest here, obviously. I mean, you, you, could, uh, you could try to say it's a gray area, but as a chairman of the board, it's your fiduciary duty to not get into a conflict of interest or in an area that is gray. Sobredo also alleges that he discovered a contract for renovations at a store at Anderson Air Force Base. But when he started digging and went straight to the individual who was supposed to have done the work, he was surprised at what he found. I called him up and I said, uh, did you do any work on Anderson Air Force Base? And he said, no, I did, uh, I did the work at Mr. Ken Leon Guerrero's home. I did the work at Mr. Ken Leon Guerrero's home, specifically tiling his floor, doing his countertop, and installing his bathroom fixtures. And so, of course, that caught me by surprise. Sobredo contends there is no project on the base. When I confronted uh, uh, Mr. Leon Guerrero regarding th this check, uh, he came back with, oh no, you've got it wrong. You know, I paid this guy cash and I'm, I'm, I gave him a deposit for work that we're going to do later on. I mean, it's so complicit. He also accused Leon Guerrero and Cotton of using the company's credit cards for personal use and never paying back what they spend. KUM contacted Leon Guerrero, who agreed on two occasions to do an interview. The day of the interview, Able Industries provided us a statement in lieu of an interview denying any mismanagement at Able Industries. The company provided a letter from ASC Trust that states that the company is fully compliant with applicable federal and local tax regulations and Able is in technical compliance with the employer contribution for 2010. With regard to the other accusations, Abel contends the allegations have been investigated and are without merit. Sobredo disagrees, though, and is hoping an investigation will be launched by the Attorney General or the U.S. Attorney's Office. We need an independent uh, person you know, appointed by the court to come in and help the people, because in the end of the day, uh, that's what it is. You know, I'm not seeking a position in the, in the, in the organization as a trustee. We should note that there are two separate pending lawsuits that have been filed regarding Able Industries. One filed in the Superior Court has even gone as far as pushing for a federal receiver to come in and take over the nonprofit organization. 
The second filed in the district court is a lawsuit Abel filed against former board of trustees who allegedly withdrew more than $700,000 of the company's money. That litigation spurred a counterclaim that was filed against Leon Guerrero, Cotton, and others. Now, just this afternoon, the district court granted a voluntary dismissal of the case, and the court noted that the control of funds is an issue to be addressed in the Superior Court case. Sobredo, meanwhile, has sent his complaints to the local attorney general's office, as well as the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Naval Criminal Investigation Service.